Hi, everybody. We welcome you to a special conversation. Tony Caridi along with West Virginia Athletic Director Ren Baker and our conversation brought to us by U.S. Cellular. Don't check your calendar yet, but time goes by very, very quickly. And Ren, you are already 60 days-ish into the job, and I know that the first 100 days are always very, very important. Let's kind of give us a lay of the land. On the ground here, I would, I would hate to see your calendar. You've been bouncing. Phone calls, individual meetings. What's the first 60 been like? It's been chaotic for sure, and my family's still in Texas. Uh, they're going to finish up the school year and come, so part of that's by design. You want to get a lot done the first 100 days, and I especially do uh, want to take advantage of this time when, when they're not... Uh, they're not here. So uh, lots and lots of meetings. Um, people keep asking me if I've bought a house uh, yet, and uh, I've only looked at one or two. So uh, there just hadn't been a lot of time for that. And, and uh, But after basketball season's over, um, I know that, that there'll be a little more uh, little more time on the schedule. And we're, we're kind of getting past that listening to her stage um, and starting to think about, OK, what, what are the steps here we need to take to build out a strategic plan and build out five-year models uh, for the things that we want to get accomplished. So yeah, what is your philosophy there? So you're listening and then based upon what you hear, based upon what you see, then you will go back and you will create a plan? Yeah, so you know, as you, as you, it's amazing when you do this and, and you take the time to listen to a broad constituency of, of people from you know, fans from all over the state to um, you know, administrative assistants in the different buildings to, to head coaches. Um, uh, you know, and all of those uh, viewpoints from all those folks matter. And ultimately, we'll take that information. Then we'll take another step where we do a little deeper dive. Um, I'm spending anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour with, with individuals. Um, but we'll bring in um, probably even an outside group to help conduct a series of in-depth interviews. Um, and then uh, from there, we'll take all that information and there'll be a parking lot of kind of general issues where, hey, we need to solve these these things because this will help everybody. And then there'll be very sports specific uh, or, or student athlete specific agendas and issues. Not all of those have a cost associated with them, um, but a lot of them will, as you know. And so uh, we'll also on the same side of that be looking at, okay, what are our revenue streams? Where can we enhance those? Um, let's be realistic in our growth projections. And then you really marry those two uh, in a priority order to say, okay, we need to do this, these things um, on the revenue side so that we can accomplish uh, these things uh, over here on our strategic plan side. Um, and so all of those parts and pieces fit together along with facility enhancements, you know, fan uh, enhancements, game day experience and amenities, um, this, you know, the student athlete uh, experience, strength coaches, nutrition. So it becomes fairly robust. We'll share a public version of that plan. It'll be much more simplified and high right. level. Um, but on the on the back end, what I like to do is have a spreadsheet with with check marks and boxes, and in year one plan, year two, year three, year four, year five, things change. But but by and large, we'll all agree on these are the things we're trying to get accomplished. Is there a general thought among the conversations that you've had, a theme that you've heard from either it be fans or staff, that is a common theme that maybe you didn't envision or think of when you first came here? Well, you know, one thing that I will say is um, that, that I knew coming in here, because I'd called people and research, but you really can't comprehend it until you, until you actually get here, is just the depth of the passion yeah. of the people. Um, and everybody in the, in, in the country thinks their university and their college athletic department is, is unique. Um, but for the most part, um, it's the same set of problems, the same set of issues uh, when, you, when you walk into one. But that statewide presence um, and the role that we play to shine a light on the university, uh, which means so much to the hopes, dreams, aspirations, and quality of life of this state, right. um, I, I think you have to really be, get here and experience that. And um, it is a honor and a privilege. Um, I'd be lying to say it's also not uh, not a pressure. Um, I think our, our coaches and student athletes and, and staff certainly feel um, the responsibility and obligation to represent the state in a way that uh, makes everybody very proud. But, um, you know, I, I think that's one of the things. I, it didn't surprise me, um, but it just, 
you can't really understand it until you experience yeah. it. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and you've been around, but I, this is, I think the uniqueness of this is that you've got a state land grant institution with 55 counties in the state and all 55 constituents care all yeah. counties care. That's the difference. You've been at Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and you're always yeah. doing this, and this one's kind of... Yeah, I mean, I was at Memphis, and the University of Memphis means a lot to the city of Memphis. I mean, very, very much so. Um, and, uh, you know, Missouri. Missouri has kind of a statewide presence, but they also have a lot of competition from right. pro, pro teams. Lots of Chief fans, lots of Cardinal fans. Um, you know, the, the Royals were, were there, um, are there, and so... Um, you know, I think in Oklahoma, it's probably 60, 40 Oklahoma State uh, fans, but it's a divided uh, state. This, there, it's unique. There's less than 10. I, I haven't, you know, I'd have to go and count experience. Maybe Arkansas is a little bit like what we have, but there's, there's very few um, that command the market share across the state that we do. You used a four-letter word a little bit ago, cost. Everything has a cost. What are your initial thoughts about where you are budget-wise, and then we'll jump into NIL and kind of give us a little bit of an overview because that literally changes almost week to week. Yeah, you know, from a budget perspective, we've got to grow the budget, period. I mean, you know, and um, I'm always going to push to be efficient uh, with, our, with our dollars. Um, you know, I understand the... Um, the, the attitude and makeup of our state to do more with less and, and be blue collar. But the reality is we have a bottom third budget in our conference and we have debt service payments that are at the top of the league and, and um, travel costs that are at the top of the league. So when you net those two out, what we have left is last to, to operate on. Um, and it, you can't just continually expect people to finish first if that's, if that's where you're at. Uh, there has to be some kind of, uh, of resource allocation that, that mirrors your expectations. And so that's a big challenge uh, moving forward. It's something that I'm spending a lot of time on. Where can we make money even as we look at some of the facility stuff? How can we not just make this uh, facility better for game days for us? but how can we make this facility where uh, we can host a lot of outside events? And if we can book, you know, a, a $100,000 every quarter in wedding receptions and birthday parties uh, at the Coliseum, you know, we have to look at not everything's gonna be a Grand Slam home run in the World Series. We gotta find those singles and put those together because when you look up and you have 10 things that made you $100,000, that's a million dollars and that's significant. Um, when you're tr when you're trying to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, so that that budget and revenue challenge is is real and that's there. Um, uh, fortunately for me, or and, and maybe unfortunately a little bit, that's not unusual f in the places I've been. Um, and we've always found a way to to grow the budget and make it work. But as we look out at the landscape in the future, future that's going to be really important. You, if I'm not mistaken, you inherited uh, debt at North Texas. You spun that around, and you were operating um, significantly um, in the black. So with West Virginia being down here in regard to other Big 12 budgets, how far do you need to go up in your view in order to be content or competitive, so to speak? Yeah, you know, I, I think you always want we, – we had a goal at North Texas initially – to get all of our programs operating in the top half. And then once we got there, we adjusted it and wanted to get them in the top fourth because mm -hmm. you know, you're always trying to get better and you can't stay content and everybody else is trying to, trying to grow their, their budget too. So, um, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, if we could initially have a goal to get in that top half, um, based on what we're, we're able to do, um, you know, I, I think we can do that. Um, there's two kinds of debt when people think about there's, there's a crude deficits that become debt, and then there's facility debt service. The facility debt service isn't in and of itself bad. If, if you can uh, build suites and clubs, for instance, and the debt service on that's five million a year, but the income is 10 million a year, that's good debt. Mm -hmm. um, we've made some choices that I agree with, like renovating the push car center, um, that we had to do to be competitive, but there's not a lot of revenue coming in from that debt. That's, that's just debt. And so um, I, I think as we look at debt in the future, especially here in the immediate future, we're going to have to uh, 
we're going to have to find a way to have debt that, that has a dedicated revenue stream. Yeah. In other words, if you spend it, I need to make money. Yes. Where's, where's my return? Yes. Moving ahead, we've got new members coming into this Big 12 conference starting next year. We've got four new ones that are coming in. We've got two now that have set their date as far as when they're going to depart in Oklahoma and Texas. So in the air, the ever nonstop conversation about potential further expansion. You've been sitting in now on those meetings. What can you share on that? Well, uh, not a lot other than to say Commissioner Yormark is, is very aggressive. He's always thinking about um, what's next. Um, you know, I, I think that's been a, a change of pace for uh, athletic directors who generally, um, you know, we're probably guilty of being a little bit ready, aim, 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 and not getting a fire. Um, I think Commissioner Yormark sometimes might be like ready, fire, aim. Uh, but, uh, but, but together, those conversations, I think we're in a really good place. We're looking progressively, trying to project ahead at the future. And, um, you know, I, I, think, uh, I, I think what Commissioner Yormark's done in a short period of time with, with his team, the, the CEOs across the conference, the ADs uh, prior to, to my arrival, you know, the Big 12 is on life support, and I believe now we're firmly entrenched as, as the third uh, most stable, strong right. uh, conference. And so uh, that says a lot based on just where we were a year, year and a half, two years ago. Um, and so I think other schools recognize that. Um, I don't know if ultimately that will end in somebody migrating over. But if it makes sense for the future of the Big 12, makes sense for them, I think it's something that um, – most of our members would definitely uh, consider and look at. Yeah. Well, a lot to talk about. This has been the first part of our conversation with Ren Baker. We'll be back with segment two as we look further down the road at West Virginia University Athletics. Thanks for being with us. A special conversation brought to us by U.S. Cellular.